red, violets are blue, super bugs may one day kill me and you. And that's because of a pretty big issue we have called antibiotic resistance. But before you hit the panic button, it's not difficult to understand how they work or how to fight back. In fact, I bet we could do it in just 4 minutes. First, we're going to need two big concepts in biology, evolution and genetics. Let's take a look at the big picture first. In evolution, antibiotic resistant bacteria arise from natural selection. That means bacteria with traits allowing them to thrive in their environment will be selected to pass on these genes to more bacteria. Antibiotics are the selective pressure affecting some of the bacteria's ability to survive. Simply put, kill them. But if we don't manage to kill the strongest ones, the bacteria population upgrades. Huh? Okay! We saw the antibiotic resistant bacteria survive and spread their genes to new generations and to other species! How exactly do they resist antibiotics? Well, you can think of each bacteria cell as a castle. Inside is DNA and small things called plasmids which usually carry the genes making the bacteria antibiotic resistant. Antibiotics attack bacteria in different ways, mostly to prevent bacteria from producing sugar, protein, stuff it needs to survive and grow. But bacteria are smart. For one, using chemical energy, they can shove an antibiotic out of the cell using an efflux pump. Or they may go through more mutations, so the antibiotic can't find what it's supposed to attack. They can even go on the offensive and create armies which seek and destroy antibiotics. So what's the key to evolving this resistance? Here's where genetics comes in. We know DNA stores genetic information, and a new strand of DNA is produced by base pairing. Sometimes small random errors occur during base pairing, causing mutated genes. With some pretty bad luck, some make bacteria resistant to antibiotics. So why is antibiotic resistance spreading so fast? Well, it's not so bad if bacteria just get their genes from their parents and are stuck with them for the rest of their life, like us. Instead, they also use something called horizontal gene transfer to swap genetic information. Kind of like exchanging parts if you're this guy. First off, transformation is like robbing a friend's body parts when they die. It happens when bacteria are in a physiological state called competence. So June dies and John comes and steals whatever DNA fragments he wants. It so happens that June was resistant to the antibiotic amoxicillin. If John picked up a fragment containing that resistant gene, John is now also resistant to amoxicillin. <laughs> The next way is transduction. Here we learn a bit about viruses. Yeah, interdisciplinary. A certain virus called a phage contains DNA that can be incorporated into bacteria DNA. If a phage with an antibiotic resistant gene latches onto John and transfers its DNA into John, it's kind of like seeing John catch a cold, except John also gains superpowers that make him antibiotic resistant. Finally, we have conjugation. So June builds a mating bridge over to John. A strand of plasmid DNA is transferred from June to John. This becomes the template to form a double-stranded DNA, leaving both cells with double-stranded plasmids. If these plasmids have resistant genes, both June and John are antibiotic resistant. <coughs> Never doing that again. Now we've seen how easy it is for bacteria to become antibiotic resistant. So how do we fight back? Time for a throwback. <laughs> Use antibiotics only for serious bacterial infections and finish your prescription so most of the bacteria are killed. This prevents the growth of strong bacteria which survived earlier dosages of your medicine. Use normal instead of antibacterial products. Continually exposing bacteria to triclosan can cause cross resistance because some antibiotics work similarly to triclosan in killing bacteria. That makes triclosan resistant bacteria resistant to some antibiotics too. <laughs> The heavy use of antibiotics in livestock develops antibiotic-resistant bacteria in this guy, which can easily develop into strains affecting us by horizontal gene transfer. So antibiotics are great and all, but misusing them can lead to serious consequences. While scientists are working hard to develop alternative solutions to antibiotics, we should do our part by using them only when needed and encourage others from ourselves to big food companies to use antibiotics only as a last resort. And together, that's how we can fight back. Hope you like the pun. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Dean and I hope you learned a bit more about antibiotic resistance. See ya!